you have a pricing guide uh, which people can look at online and we talk about the space sort of in a homogenous way it's not at all pricing varies all around the all country Absolutely. I mean, each market is spread up by their own state boundaries, and they can't transport across those lines, so pricing wildly varies. What would you say are the most interesting dynamics happening right now at so the wholesale level? Certain markets like the Pacific Northwest, West Coast, are great for growing cannabis outdoors, and they have this oversupply problem, so it's obviously underpriced. And you see, like Oregon, for example, trying to create legislation to ship across state lines, which would be the first time that's considered. What would it take to actually see that legislation go through, A, and B? Well, let's start there. So it passed them in both houses in Oregon, and it's on the desk of the governor there to sign. But a lot of these deals are, that are done are like it's law when it's federally legal. So it's queued up to go, similar to the acreage deal that they did with Canopy. Uh, and then it crosses over to being in action once that change happens. Given the fact that you have so many varying prices looking across different states, different regions, is the time coming, maybe sooner rather than later, to see some sort of futures contract around cannabis? Potentially. I mean, we've seen a few demos of platforms that are doing this, like, commodity exchange. Definitely a little more advanced than where the market is right now. But um, that's definitely to come. You got a lot of data here based on your own B2B business. That's yep. pretty unique. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we're excited to announce we're moving over a billion dollars now through the marketplace, but we've historically done over a billion as well over the last three and a half years. Does that data become more valuable or less valuable as potentially laws change and you don't have as much fragmentation across states? The number one question a lot of our clients ask is where is there an opportunity for us to launch this product or begin in this new market? And we have that information that we want to help them grow with. So I think more valuable. A lot of the numbers you see are retail numbers. This is all organic numbers from our own marketplace. Uh, categories, uh, cartridges, edibles, flour. What's the biggest? What's the fastest growing? Fastest growing and part of our bet is brands. So the margin we think is really to be made on CPG packaged products uh, because flour is becoming, to your point on the commodities exchange, exactly what that is. Uh, so we bet and we have actually now 80 brands launching every week in the space. 80 brands a week? Yeah. This the, is, uh, what, 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 give us examples. So anything with fat or sugar now pretty much could be infused with THC. We have like over 170,000 SKUs on the platform. Anything from cannabis beef jerky to coffee and tea, I mean, it, anything. Does it, because it binds to something in, in, in those types of products or exactly. what? Exactly, yeah, the sugar and the fat is what it can bind to. And you have some really interesting new technologies coming out that allow it to potentially partake in even d new products. So you would say the growth is better there than say, I don't know, uh, lotions or topicals or things like that? Those markets are, are growing as well. I think CBD right now particularly is like a really hot topic there. But where like we place our, where we think the biggest companies will be, will be likely in the things that were most commonly used and most frequently bought. In terms, of, in terms of your business model, specifically wholesale, so you're supplying to retailers as well. Are you supplying to retailers like, say, Kroger that just announced they're going to be getting into CBD in certain states? So, yeah, so our, well, our marketplace, we're not a cannabis company. We connect the buyers and the sellers. Yep. So if you're a licensed, Kroger isn't a licensed cannabis retailer dispensary. But if you are, you can have an account on LeafLink and then create a cart with all the brands. And then that's how they process their transactions. Maybe eventually there could, it could expand the community. But we have now four out of five retailers in the States with LeafLink accounts purchasing. What's your ambition as far as technology and perhaps being some sort of a, a data company yourself? There's definitely a data play to be considered. What we're most excited about is creating this new paradigm for a B2B marketplace. We all use B2C marketplaces at home. We go to work, you use texts, emails, phone calls, invoices. We want to change that dynamic in this space because it's the space is a startup. So we could define instead of disrupt now, and that we want to be a model five years down the road for more legacy industries. You know, it's funny, uh, we've covered this space for a few years, and in the early days, people would come on and giggle and snicker, and there's a generation of people in the business, I imagine, like you, who never thought it was really that funny, right? Who saw that it was actually pretty serious. Yeah. Is that, is that how you see it? The, we, we're getting inbounds from funds that wouldn't meet with us when we were raising capital two or three years ago. It's gone from, do you really want to be in this space, to this is genius, everyone wants to be in this space. We used to have to hide cannabis industry in job descriptions, and now we feature it because huh. it makes it all the more exciting.